Hello world, I'm a cop. Welcome back to Neo Scavenger. Back again, part four. Shouldn't really say back twice that close to each other, but anyways. So, we're in a pretty good situation right now. It's nighttime, we've had a good rest. We got ourselves our camping gear here. Let's take that with us. We've got, well, we got what we need. We got a lot of water. We got a metal saucepan so we can boil water if it's not boiled. Actually, is all of our water boiled? Let's empty this out. Okay, it looks like all of our water is sterilized. Let's actually have a bit of a drink since we're a little bit thirsty. So we're just sleeping here. Yes, we got... Alright, what was I saying? Okay, we got the good sleeping bag. We got we got trapping skills so we can catch squirrels if we uh, get hungry. We are... A little to the west. This is west, right? No, wait. This is west. Wait. What? Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is east. Yeah, a little bit east to the Geig's cryo facility. We went and checked out this corner here just to see what we got there. We found the isotope mine, and now we're just heading to Detroit Mega City. To, uh, actually, would you please show me where I actually am? Thank you. Yeah, to, you know, sell our stuff. We got a lot of stuff to sell. We got a lot of bullets. Bullets are worth a lot of money. Uh, I think we have some bullets over here as well. Yep. Yeah. We got a bow here, which is worth you know, at least some money, and it's, we're kind of in a situation where, like, our inventory is pretty full, we can't really fit that much, let's actually make some more space here, Can yeah, we can't fit that much stuff in here, uh, let's turn that on to see what time it is, it's, oh, it's 1.33, uh, that's really not a good time to head off here, so is there anything we could do, do we need to work on something, uh, we could grab some of those strings. Well, let's break some of those big strings there, so that we can have a full stack of small strings. And this was a stack of six. Yeah, we'll just break this apart. Grab all of these, and uh, well, let's just wait a couple hours, maybe. Or hmm, have we? Can we see if we can scavenge stuff through the darkness? I'm not sure. So we took everything out. Yeah, okay. Let's go see if we've... Yeah, we've been and scavenged here. Wow, why do we did not go to zero moves? Interesting. Uh, let's stay here for a little while. Uh, what do we got here? It says that there's something in the camping. Oh, there's nothing in the camping here. Uh, okay, now it went to... One out of one. Why wasn't it one out of one when we went to here? Huh. Well, we'll just uh, hang here for a little while until it gets a little bit lighter and then we're just gonna, yeah, start moving towards Detroit. Because that's where we want to go. Okay, and we'll try to. Today we're trying to stay awake for as long as possible. So that uh, when we actually wake up tomorrow, we won't be uh, in the darkness immediately. Hey, we found one of those water checking things, so that's good. I mean, they're usually worth some. Oh my, a box cart! Mm. Unfortunately, the condition is only 11. Now, we're gonna take it, for sure. That's our vehicle. Come on, take it. And we're just gonna take everything in here. Like, all right, you, you need to have bottles here first, of course, of course, of course. I mean, even the rocks. <laughs> Shouldn't probably take the rocks. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter that. something in these pants as well yeah okay ooh a squirrel let's eat it first of all we're gonna have to cut it to pieces that and that and I'm pretty sure we got some shots somewhere yes confirm I also realized that we have something to eat yeah it's in here uh, let's eat that. Let's put 
something smarter. Okay, let's put the, oh, let's put these bullets in here. Uh, would like to stop being here? Uh, yeah. Oh no, we don't want to put this phone because we occasionally want to check the time, so we want to put that phone in there. Uh, do we need the strings? Probably not. We can like check them from other places. Take that. Okay. Okay, we got some little bit of extra room, and uh, let's make a small campfire. Known recipes, some tools, small campfire. Oh, we can use focus sunlight, can we? No. Okay, let's just lit it and. Uh, did not have the correct thing here. Again, I very often I do it the wrong way. Where's the piece of meat? There is the piece of meat. That. Did we eat that one piece of meat we had there? I think we did. Okay, we'll eat this. And uh, we will take everything with us. Okay, okay, we can't get any money for the rocks, so let's just leave the rocks behind. Or from the twigs either. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, mm, uh, mm -hmm, yeah, right. Uh, 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 clean rags has fallen apart. That's the one on my face, right? Yeah, we'll just leave that there. Put another clean rag on my face because we have, yeah, 10 here. I'm just gonna try to get as far away from that dogman as possible. I do not want to fight one right now, so... Okay, I think... Yeah, well, we're gonna go check out that place, because these places usually have... <laughs> Man, our tracks! Someone can really easily follow our tracks. Okay, a lot of these places over here. That's nice. Was there another noise trap? No. Okay, they stack only to two, so we'll only take two. Oh, but we will take everything that's worth even a little bit of money. How far are we? Oh, we're still pretty far from Detroit. Uh, right, should have always check everything first and just then start uh, looting. Oh, we're tired already. Uh, that's not the best thing in the world. But, like I said, we're gonna try to keep moving until we're like really, really tired. A lot of these shacks here. Okay, we're thirsty. Well, let's drink some water. I know for sure that all of this should be sterilized. Do I know it for sure? I think for sure. I don't know. Uh. Oh, what was that? Ooh, a night vision goggles. Nice. Uh. Do they use batteries? I mean, we need power for them, but it's just regular batteries we can put in there. No. So, well, we'll take them. We might sell them. If they, well, they're worth quite a lot of money, actually. And another makeshift sack. And yeah, we'll take all the pants. Okay, uh, yeah, let's go down here. And we'll check those places out as well. And if we just get our cart full, how? What's this? Okay, the condition of this cart is going down fast. So what I think we're actually gonna do is, uh, can we just put these in in here? Okay, so you stack up to five. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's grab everything that's got some worth. And yeah, let's actually try to beeline it to Detroit. Because I think that uh, the condition of this, like, it's 7.8 right now. Uh, if we rest, or right, take go to next turn, it's 7.4. Yeah, every turn reduces the condition of that thing, I'm pretty sure. So if it drops by 
point four every turn. We have uh, point four, so ten goes to four percent. Twenty minus two, so we got like eighteen turns before this actually breaks. So we might just make it. Might just make it. And uh, oh, the best part is even if it gets dark, we can uh, put the crowbar in here and put the uh, the flashlight in our hand, and then we will s we can actually move in the dark. So it doesn't really matter. And yeah, we're passing by a lot of places we could scavenge, but I really think that trying to get to oh man, it's still so far away. But we can probably make it uh, I wonder if we sh should put okay now I'm gonna do the thing where I'm going to put this in here oh uh, pretty sure we can make space here yeah gonna put the flashlight in our hand Turn it on, because I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be dark. Oh, it wasn't dark yet. Well, turn it off. Don't want to use too much of the power. Oh! As you step into a clearing, you finally see the source of that eastern glow. It's a city, larger than any you've ever seen. Skyscrapers and their bigger brothers, arcologies, stand shoulder to shoulder, casting their glittering lights into the city. Hovering lights flit around the super towers like fireflies. A massive wall encircles their base, with armed buttresses like glowing points on a crown. And radiating out from that wall, a shanty town of crumbling buildings, shacks, and tarp lean-tos. Relief at the sight of civilization almost overtakes you, until you realize you still have to make it there. That and scavenging promises to get a lot. That and scavenging promises to get a lot harder in the city, as nearby ruins will have been picked over already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, now I'll turn this back on. Yeah, okay, now it's dark. And we still got five out of, out of five movements because we have the flashlight. You hear them before you see them. People, lots of them. Pushing branches aside, you're presented with the city you saw from afar. A hybrid between shantytown, refugee camp, and RV park skirts the massive walls to the city. Everywhere you look, people navigate the winding, muddy roads, carrying supplies, patching holes in shelters, or arguing over property. Smoke from a thousand camp stoves and barrel fires trail upward, and the scent of cooked food elicits a gargling from your stomach. Nary an eye pays any attention to you. There's one of the dozens of ragtag corpses shuffling in from the wasteland. Beggars, customers, hopefuls, prey. Welcome to DMC Sprawl. As you step around a muddy top shanty on the edge of the sprawl, you stumble across an old fifth wheel with smoke streaming from a stovepipe. People are lined up outside, taking turns ordering at a window. You're standing outside the Last Chance Canteen. Originally named for its location on the outskirts of the sprawl, locals often joke that the Last Chance Canteen is in fact a warning to prospective patrons. Known for serving whatever is available, as well as a few suspect staple dishes, the Last Chance is a venue for those hungry and not too fussy about their food's origins. Still, the old fifth wheel draws lines enough to keep its grills hot, so nobody must have died from their food. Yet. Now we don't have any money, so we just gotta leave. Okay, uh, I think this over here is, yes, the junk market. As you navigate the winding alleys of DMC Sprawl, you encounter a huge structure fashioned of shipping containers. Throngs of people enter and exit the structure through the doorway on one side. Inside, you can see a thriving bazaar where people trade scavenged items in the light of thousand lanterns and bug zappers. The air is thick with sweat, smoke, and the smell of barbecue and spices. This is the Sprawl's notorious junk market. Pick up items to purchase them or drop items to sell them. You can check store policies. Hardware slash software. If hardware slash software is not switched on and unlocked, vendors will only pay the hardware's value as if it were empty. Items will then be appraised by a specialist and resold at full price. Medicines. Vendors will only pay a nominal fee for unidentified pills. Pills will then be identified and sold at a full price. When in doubt, verify the vendor's purchase price before surrendering items to them. All sales final. Right, so if we go to our inventory here, here is the stuff. We can buy and, well, we can sell, sell stuff from our own inventory. So, first of all, we're going to sell all the bullets because we don't need them. We are going to sell uh, this... Uh, how can we... This bow with a strap. 
Okay, we got bullets there. We got bullets here. Uh, let's turn this off. Uh, I'm probably gonna sell the sleeping pills we had as well because I don't think we need them for anything. Okay, those bullets. Sell them. Do you wanna sell this? No. Ooh, we need to remember to get some power while we're here. Sell those things. We only have one handful of twigs. Uh, we wanna sell the other phone. Okay. Let's over here, yeah, we'll sell this. Uh, this were all sleeping pills. Yeah, we're just gonna sell the sleeping pills. We don't need them. Oh, look at the amount of money we already got. Nice, 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 nice. And we're gonna sell the scope. We're gonna actually should have probably checked that the yeah this condition isn't that good. Which one of you has best condition? Okay, we're gonna sell you. Your condition is seventy. Your condition is thirty-nine. Yeah. We'll sell this. This one we will keep. Uh, is there anything else over here we want to sell? I don't think so. Uh, we could sell because the first aid kits themselves. Like we don't need this kit, really. So we could sell the kits. Uh, we'll sell the empty, empty thing. Yeah, we can just remove everything. From the kit. Ooh, what's. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh no, our backpack condition 6.2! That's. not good. What's our duffel bag condition 21.3? Uh, we're. Okay, but it doesn't. The fact that, that our backpack is in a bad condition doesn't matter to the fact that we're still gonna sell these first eight kits. And, uh,. Because they, they don't give any extra space. It's 4 times 4, it takes 4 times 4 space. So we'll just uh, take everything out of there and sell that kit. Now, we had a lot of stuff over here that we want to sell. Uh, yeah, we'll sell the arrows, we'll sell the cleaver, we'll sell the trap, we'll sell that. We'll... Actually, I think we'll just sell all of the stuff we have here. Yeah, like, there's no reason to hold on to any of this. Uh, we are gonna hold on to some of these assorted small sparks. I think we only had 18. Yeah. Sell the rest. And, oh, they didn't need to go out of there. I'm going to go back here. Put this over here. Oh, if they'd sell a new, us a new backpack, that would be really nice. Uh... Okay, is there, is there anything here that looks like we want to buy it? Cheap memory stick with a lamp. Well, there's the Detroit Mega City tracking bracelet for 3,000. We do not have enough money to get that, that is for sure. Ah, uh, I don't really see anything we'd like to buy. Yeah, not really. Mmm. Man, our backpack's gonna break down like really soon and... Well, then we're gonna have to make another makeshift sack and have two sacks in our hands. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. And this one won't last forever either. Oh, crap. This is not good. Not good, not good, not good. Uh... There's our antibiotics, there's our antibiotics. Let's put these things over here, and let's put the telephone there as well. Okay! Well, that's all we could sell here. Uh, it's slate, so... Look, yeah, I, I've allowed you to do that before game. Why are you asking to now? It's weird, sometimes this game just ask you those things. Down here, squeezed between the DMC southern wall and the Great Swamp's proverbial hard place, you finally find a place boasting vacancy. St. James Parkade. St. James Parkade is what sounds like a, a pre-apocalypse parking garage, except in this case repurposed to birth humans. Someone had the bright idea to leave all the cars in, the par in a parking garage, hook them up to an unlicensed power tap and charge occupancy by the night. A patron could rent an open pickup if they're down on their luck, and own a sleeping bag, they could rent a hatchback if they have little extra to spend on heat and shelter and door locks, 
or if they have the taste for fine living splurge for a full size van with its own chem toilet. It's no Ritz Carlton, however, it's also not sleeping exposed to anyone who wanders by, and that's what counts. So, uh, we're gonna rent a pickup for 24 hours for 20 bucks. Just because, you know, we're rich now. I mean, not that rich, but, you know, still rich enough. When you find your stall, there's a maroon pickup truck in it. The bed's more than big enough to stretch out, maybe for two or three people if you really want it. The cab, on the other hand, is pretty minimal. No slipping in there unless you're a fan of sore neck and back. It'll do for a place to safely stash your stuff, though, and the parkade's roof at least stops the rain. Safely stash your stuff? Seriously, can we actually stash our stuff here? Okay, we got... So, there's either just the open ground near a communal trash fire, or we got the current... the a pickup truck here, a dome light. We can't really do anything with that. So, we will take our stuff, we will put it in here and we will sleep because it's nighttime and we're tired. Okay, slept. Let's take this stuff back. Let's check what time it is. Okay, it's 4 for one. Okay, it's almost light, so we will turn that back off. Uh, we're not gonna eat or drink any of our own stuff because we're just gonna go back to the last chance canteen. Also, let's check the chunk market. Have they changed? Yeah, their stuff's changed. Ooh, there's a hundred percent higher poopy. Uh, what's the, our situation here? 2.6. Yeah, that's gonna break down like really soon. Uh, 5.7. Mmm, because I kinda like really want to take the higher poopy backpack. Ah, we're actually gonna take this uh, multi tool pocket knife, that's for sure. Uh, we're gonna put it in this pocket over here. Oh, we got some bullets here! Right, let's just sell those things as well. And there's one of the best things in the game, the nano robotic medical kit. That's gonna save your life very often if you have it, but I don't think we really have the money to buy it. What's our saucepan condition? 83. Okay, we don't really need a new saucepan. Ooh, power, 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 power. Okay, let's go here. Uh, power, we can always just grab from this. If we use it, it gets more power in there, and then we can just empty it out. So, we have batteries over here. Uh, split. Empty out. Put full power into the batteries. Batteries back in there. We have batteries in our flashlight. Yep. Empty those out. Empty that out power in there, we get power in our phone's battery, empty that out, full power in there, and I think that's all the power we have right now. But hey, at least uh, we get full power in this thing, which is nice, and yeah, no more power for any okay, so let's go to the last chance canteen, we'll use it, and then we will Buy some non-veg stew, which <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is, but it's the cheapest one. Oh, tenders are also good. Oh, I think, because I think if we buy the tenders, which are also for, we only get hunger, but with this we get thirst and hunger a lot. Despite your increase, you fail to learn anything more about the non-committal stew. The flavor is just as perplexing as the name. Better than dirty socks boiled in MSG, but only just. We'll take another one of those to be full here, which is always good. Right, so off we go, and then let's try to head inside Detroit Mega City. Navigating the twisty maze of shacks and top shelters, Detroit's massive walls stand as a constant backdrop to the east. Easily half a dozen stories high, and probably almost as thick, the city walls are an impressive sight to behold. Armed towers, bristling with surveillance arrays, stand at regular intervals, keeping watch over the sprawl, and likely the city within. Before you, giant width I was trying to say wide screens, but giant width screens on the three gate houses flashed instructions about pass requirements and threat levels as flocks of people stream into and out of the gates. You take your place in line to on the right with the others entering the city. I really wonder what who are the people who are like streaming out of here? Like why are they coming out of here? Well, I, I mean, there's gotta be some people who get, like, the day pass, and they, they come into the city, and then they come out, and they just live in the sprawl. Yeah, that's probably what it's about. 
When you reach the front of the line, a sinking feeling overcomes you. Heavily armed guards in full combat armor are checking attendees with some sort of scanning device. You are pretty sure that whatever these other folks have to get in, you are missing it. When it's your turn, the guard stops you and turns to a monitor installed on the wall. A message reads, device not detected, entrance denied. With the efficiency and compassion of an assembly line worker, he directs you away from the line, back outside. Unfortunately, getting entrance to the city may be trickier than just showing up. Back outside, you cross the muddy square and stop to survey the area. Where do you go now? Would anyone in the sprawl know about the cryo facility? You're startled when you notice a man has been watching you. He's wearing a long brown coat and matching hat and is leaning on a walking stick. From this distance, you can almost see the glint of his eyes below Trilby's brim, though it's probably just your imagination. He takes his time approaching you, and as he nears, you notice there's heavy macolage on his face. Huh. It reminds you... I, I'm not really sure what that word means. I, I probably checked it, like the first time I played this, I probably checked what that means. Probably like makeup or something. It reminds you of one of those old portraits you'd see in a history textbook. Folks call me Hatter, he says matter-of-factly. I think we may be able to help each other. Come with me. Hatter's office is in the husk of one of those flop house ho hotels you'd see crammed between high rises in a busy city. It even has at the old Marquet hanging precariously from the cornerstones. Several floors up, armed guards watch over the street from missing sections of the building. Hatter acknowledges the men at the door and leads you through a surprisingly clean lobby to an old fashioned elevator. I have a client, he starts, pausing for the cage to rattle shut, who collects heirlooms. He speaks louder over the motor. He compensates well. Well enough, in fact, that I'd be willing to pop the DMC's visitor pass in exchange. The elevator clunks to a halt and the door rattles open, revealing a dark room lit by video screens and old lamps. Stepping off the elevator, it feels like you walk into a control center built into an antique store. Baubles and relics crowd the walls and tabletops, while video screens and computer consoles cast a bluish tint on a handful of armed guards. Hatter crosses the room to sit at a low, broad desk facing the elevator. There's a lake. He pulls a worn road atlas from a desk row, about a day's walk northwest of here. Inside a building, there's a silver urn. He pages through the atlas to a map of Michigan. My guess is that you know a thing or two about getting around out there. Maybe this could be your ticket into the DMC. He pauses to look up at you. Interested? Okay, let's use our trapping skill. Something's fishy here. Something doesn't add up. You're no seasoned mercenary, but you're sure any fixer worth his soul is going to be careful with whom he contracts for work. And a visitor's pass can't be cheap, so there's no way this is just a cakewalk test. Plus, Hatter approached you. Nobody walks into a town out of nowhere and gets that kind of welcome. Something doesn't wash here, and it's making you edgy. I don't like this, you say, stopping short of sound being threatened. Sound like someone's trying to set me up. That gets Hatter's attention. You hear the creak of leather as the guard tenses. Hmm, he says, leaning back in his creaky chair. Turns out maybe you are worth the extra attention you seem to have garnered. He looks down at the blank spot on his desk, considering something a moment, and starts talking again. Your, let's call him employer, had a particular interest in you. He leans forward and starts interacting with his security console. Interested enough to open this urn contract with the express instructions that it only be assigned to you. Said I'd find you trying to enter the DMC. Said it front the cost of the visitor's pass if I got you to do it. He finishes a keystroke and gestures to the wall monitors. One of the monitors switches to a view of this room with a cycling time code in the lower corner. After a few seconds of fast forwarding, it switches to real time playback. There, standing where you are now, a black mass about the size of a man talks with Hatter. The detail seems to be glitchy, as if there were some dark colored static distorting the signal, but only around the figure. What's with the censoring? You ask. Do you know? He says. Look normal in person. Must be some sort of EM interference. The discussion is short, punctuated by the figure handing Hatter a small object, then leaving. As a rule, I don't disclose client info like this. He stops the video. But you seem like a decent type. More to the point, resourceful. And while money talks, I'll take a competent operative over cash any day. He reaches into a drawer and pulls out a small black wristband. The pass is yours. I'll keep my ear to the ground for any info on this Reaper fellow and let you know. And hey, he says before letting go of it. Maybe you come around again when you're looking for some work. We... We get the pa... I didn't even know we can use trapping to get the pass like that. What was it tracking? Trapping or tracking? I think it was trap... Wait, do we have both? Okay, it was trapping. Because usually what I do is I use in the... Full first fight with the wolf man that the game begins with. I use melee and 
melee and strong. I think it's melee and strong. If you use them together. Yeah, so if you use melee and strong together, you kill the wolfman and you get the video that you can then show Hatter and that way you can get the uh, the wristband. And uh, that'll allow you to get into the city. That's the way... Oh, we got the uh, night vision goggles, right. But yeah, that's the way I usually handle a Hatter. So I was kind of expecting that we'd have to do the quest that he want, like he's sending us to get the urn. Because I think I tried to do the urn getting maybe once or twice. This is, it's it's actually not that normal for me to even get all the way to Detroit Mega City, because I sometimes just start going like different directions just to find out other places. But here we are, and we got the bracelet. But I think that's actually a pretty good spot to stop this video right now. And that's what we're gonna do. So next time we're gonna head inside the Detroit Mega City and see what we find from there. But yeah, this video is gonna end here. I'm Uncle Cop, uh, this has been Neo Scavenger back again. Goodbye world, thanks for watching. See you next time.